Creating your own animated piñata is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Okay, so before we start sketching, before we start drawing, there are a few freebies that you might want to download just to make your life a little bit easier. First of all, if you want, you can have the color palette I'm going to be using. You can see it's pretty simple, but if you want to do the exact same thing, the color palette will be linked below. And since this is a video to celebrate the two year anniversary of this YouTube channel, I also included two free brush that you can download. So one of them is the confetti brush that you can see in the background right here. And we also have a piñata paper brand new brush that's going to help you create your piñata really quickly. So both of those brushes along with the color palette are going to be linked in the description below. And again, they're totally free. So feel free to go ahead and download them to just make your life a little bit easier for the rest of the tutorial. So here we're going to start by really quickly sketching out which kind of piñata you want to have. Now I'm going with the kind of, you know, super iconic donkey, but you could have any shape of your choice. And if you want to draw a different animal, but you're not exactly sure how to draw that animal, I have a playlist that will link in the description below with a bunch of tutorials of how to draw like a cat, a dog, a bear, you know, a bunch of different animals. So you can check that out. But otherwise we're just going to create a new layer. We're going to rename this layer to Sketch. And for the sketch, you can really use any color of your choice because we're not going to see it in the final result. I'm going to just sketch with a neutral gray. And in this video, usually, you know, I recommend a few different brushes. I suggest free brushes that come with Procreate as well as, you know, brushes from one of my bundle. But here we're mostly going to be using the Piñata Paper brush. That being said, for the sketch, we need to use, you know, a regular brush, otherwise that won't really work. So just to stay coherent with what I usually do, if you're working with free Procreate brushes for your sketch, you could go in the sketching pack that comes with Procreate, again, free brushes, and pick the HB pencil. Or otherwise, uh, let's go with my inking pack, yeah. So if you have my inking, stippling, and texture bundle, you could go in the inking pack that comes with it and pick the bonus sketching brush. So again, here you can sketch whatever you want, but if you want to have a donkey like in my example, we're going to start with just a basic rectangle, which is going to be the body. Then we're going to draw two more rectangles for the legs, roughly the same height as the body. Then you're going to extend this front line here a little tiny bit for the neck. And then you're going to roughly gauge where the middle of this horizontal line is, so the top of the back. And that's where you're going to put the back of the neck. And the neck is going to be roughly the same height as, you know, the body and the legs. So, kind of like that. Now we're just going to finish up the face. So bringing it forward, up, and around. Now to make it look like this super cliche piñata shape, we're going to add very big ears. So just rounded triangles. And you can also add a bit of a tail, so maybe refining this, adding a curve, and then just quickly showing that you're going to have a tail here. Now, no matter which shape you're drawing your piñata in, we need to make sure that we map out roughly where the different sections or different colors are going to be. So just go ahead and loosely map that out. It could be really however you want, depending on how thick you want the little pieces of paper to be, or how thin you want them to be. So just drawing a few horizontal lines or vertical if you wanted to have a different pattern to divide your piñata. And that's really all we need for the sketch, so take all the time you need to create your piñata shape, map out the different sections, and then we're going to move on straight to the colors. Okay, so the colors are going to be pretty simple because we do have the piñata paper brush. So we're going to start by selecting this brush and it should be in a category at the very bottom of your brush library called imported. Yeah, there we go. Then we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename this new layer to colors. And usually we put the colors under the sketch, but for this case, I think we're actually going to keep the color layer above the sketch. 
Now obviously you can use any color of your choice for your pinata, but I'm just going to go with the color palette here. Now I do recommend that you go ahead and first select your colors, so three, four, five colors, and either go in the palette section here, tap on the plus to create a new palette, and then, well it's going to be at the top, that's a bit annoying, <laughs> but just add your colors in there so that it's easy for you to go back, because we're going to create layers and we're going to have to go back between the colors all the time. So making sure you have them kind of saved somewhere is going to be really super helpful. Now if you don't want to use my palette, you want to have some sort of a different color scheme, I recommend you go and first start by picking one color you know you want to have in your pinata. So for example, it could be a purple. Putting that in your palette and then using the Harmony uh, color tool, I guess, here. And going through the different harmonies and seeing if there's a color kind of palette that is being created that you like. So for example, I could say, oh, and I like analogous, so I'm just going to pick those colors and add them to my palette and essentially create my pinata palette that way. That being said again, I'm going to personally use the palette I'm providing along with the video, otherwise it's not fair, so I'm just going to go back to that. And here, all we have to do is select a pinata paper brush and with any color, just start by testing the size. I feel like my size is pretty good and that's pretty much what I want, but you could go ahead and make it bigger just to have, you know, bigger pieces of paper. So that's totally up to you, that depends on the piece you're drawing, what kind of paper you want to have, as well as the canvas size. So there's really no right or wrong brush size here. Now if you don't want to download the brush, which I'm not sure why not because it's free, but if you don't want to download it or if you cannot download it, you could just go ahead and draw all the individual pieces of paper and slightly change the color between, you know, every piece. And for that you would just use any basic brush like in the airbrushing pack, you could use the hard brush. Or if you have my inking pack, you could pick the base round or the ultra smooth tracing, really anything here. Uh, but it's just going to take way longer, obviously, because you have to draw these separate little pieces. And it's going to be pretty quick here, we're just going to paint the different sections. But make sure that you start with the sections that are lower, because we want the piece of paper to stack on top of each other. So we're going to start with the very bottom of the pinata, no matter what shape we're using again. And then we're going to end at the ears. And just a little detail here, if you are using the paper brush, make sure that you're always swiping in the same direction, so for example, from left to right, otherwise your piece of paper, uh, you're going to see, they're going to look kind of different. So yeah, just add your different rows with your different colors, again, bottom to top, and with that, with that we're going to add a few details like the eye and the string. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this find a video, please go ahead and leave me a comment with what shape you're using for your pinata. Now, if you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused as to what is this secret password thing. Long story short, it's a game that we play in every single illustration video. I hide a secret password for you to find. And the secret password does a few things. But the most important thing it does is it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better and that helps me create better tutorials for you which is really super important. So just go ahead and leave me a comment with which kind of pinata you're drawing and then we're going to keep going. Now the bottom and the sides of your shape should look fine, but the top, not so much. So we're going to quickly reshape it a little bit just using the erasers. And for that I recommend using probably the medium hard brush from the airbrushing pack. Again, free brush that comes with Procreate, but for your eraser. So just using that. 
and just going over the different top sections just to clean them up a little bit. Great, so we're quickly going to do the background just to help us see the piñata better. And at this stage, if you want, you can honestly just hide your sketch. And here you can draw any kind of background you want. I have a few background tutorials, I will link those in the description below as well if you want to have a more elaborate background. But here I'm going to keep it simple because I want to have time to do the animation later down the road. So for now, we're just going to set the background color to a really dark blue. And the color palette, it is this one right here. It's, it's really hard to see, but I promise you it's, it's right there. And that's going to allow you to see your pinata shape a little bit better. And it's going to allow you to see if there is anything else you want to erase, like the top of the ear in my case, maybe the bottom of the face a little bit too. But it's also going to help you see if there are any gaps. So to fill in those gaps, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new layer below the color layer. And we're going to rename it to uh, pinata shape, I guess. And on this piñata shape layer, we're just going to pick any of the colors we used in the piñata. I'm going to go, I guess, with yellow. There we go. And with just a regular round brush. So again, either in the airbrushing pack, if you're working with free brushes, uh, hard brush this time. Or if you have my inking pack, you could pick the base round brush. But essentially, we just want a brush that doesn't have any texture or any feathering or any kind of weird watercolor effect, just to go back in and fill in the gaps. Great, so we're also going to draw the tail. Now the tail, if you want, you could create a separate layer. I'm just going to draw it straight onto the color layer. And you can stick with the brush we just used for the pinata shape. Or if you do have the inking pack, you might want to switch to the ultra smooth tracing. It is just a little bit more precise. And then all you have to do is go through your color palette and add little ribbons using those colors. We're also going to draw the eye. Now the eye, I do recommend you draw it on a separate layer and I'm going to tell you why in a second. So just go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to eye. For the eye, we're just gonna go ahead and use white and then you can just place it wherever you want. Now, if you want it to be a perfect circle in Procreate, it's quite easy. Just draw a quick circle, then hold your pencil and tap with a secondary finger, which is going to create a perfect circle. You can also resize it by just moving your pencil inside and out. Now the reason we're drawing it on a separate layer is that it makes it really easy to just move it around. So you can just use your arrow tool and reposition the eye. You can also resize it as needed. And it's also going to be great at helping us position the black area and the eye. So just go ahead and create a new layer. We name it to pupil. And we're going to apply it as what is called a clipping mask. So just tapping on the pupil layer, selecting clipping mask in the menu. And by applying the pupil layer as a clipping mask onto the eye, now everything we draw on this pupil layer is going to stay within the eye shape, which means we can just go in, 
pick a dark gray like this one in the color palette, draw another circle, fill it in, and then we can quickly just move it around to decide which, you know, which direction we want our pinata to be looking in. If you want, you could also add a bit of a highlight. Now here I'm realizing mine is a little bit too low, so I'm just going to select both of those layers. So just swiping them towards the right with one finger. And then just using the arrow tool I can reposition the eye so I can make sure it is exactly where I want it to be. You could also add a bit of a nostril, so just going back on the color layer, back to the gray, and adding a nostril if you want. You could add a mouth, you could really add any kind of detail you desire here. Obviously, depending on which kind of pinata you're drawing. Should I add two? Yeah, I'm actually going to add two nostrils. So feel free to pause the video here if you have more details you want to add on your pinata. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the string and finishing the background before adding a bit of shadows. So for the string, go ahead and create a new layer above the eye, above the color, above everything we have, and rename it to string. Now this string, I want it to be white, but you could have it be any color of your choice. And we're going to make sure it is perfectly vertical on the piece, so we're just going to draw a line, then hold the pencil, and to make sure it's perfectly vertical, we're also going to tap with another finger. And before moving on to shading, if you want, you could add a few confettis in the background, so for that, just create a new layer, making sure it is below anything related to the pinata, and renaming it to confettis. Confettis can be any color of your choice. I want mine to just kind of blend with the background, so I'm actually going to use uh, the background color. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And here you have two options. Once more, you can just draw the confettis manually. But if you downloaded the freebie, you could just use the confetti brush and then just brushing it over the background to add confettis really quickly. Now I feel like those are a little bit too intense, so I'm personally going to just lower the opacity of that layer a little bit. Great! Now we have one more little thing to do before we start the animation, which is going to be just adding a little bit of shadows on this pinata because right now it's super, super, super flat. But before that, we're just going to organize our layers a little bit. So go ahead and delete the sketch layer. So you can just swipe it towards the left with one finger and select delete. I'm also going to delete my example. And then we're going to select all the layers that are related to the pinata. So swiping them towards the right with one finger. So we should have the pinata shape, the color, the eye, the pupil, the string, and any kind of other element you might want to have, but not the confettis. And then we're going to group that and rename the group to Piñata. Now within this group, right above the color layer, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename it to Shadows. Now we want to make sure the shadows stay within the basic shape that we have, so we're also going to apply it as a clipping mask, just like we did for the pupil on the eye. And we also want the shadows to blend with all the different colors we have on the pinata. So we are going to apply the shadow layer as a blending mode. So to do that, just tap on the N next to the check mark. And I do have a full video about blending modes if you are not familiar with them. I highly recommend you check it out because they're a very, very powerful tool in digital art. But for now, just consider that it's going to allow us to select one color, paint all of the shadows with that one color, and then that color is going to adapt to whatever is underneath based on the blending mode. So here we're going to use the blending mode Linear Burn, which is going to be great for shadows. And we're going to lower the opacity around 40% for now. And here for shadows, you can pick any color of your choice as long as it is not a neutral gray or black because that's going to make your shadows look super muddy. I'm personally going to go with a grayish purple, kind of like this. And don't worry, it really doesn't need to be precise at all. I'm going to show you how to tweak it later. And here for the shadows, again, you have a few different brush options. If you're working with free brushes that come with Procreate, go ahead and in the airbrushing pack, pick the soft brush making sure the opacity is at 100% if you've watched any of my watercolor videos before. And if you have my inking pack, go ahead and pick the low ink marker. 
And here we're going to keep the shadows really simple. We're just going to shade the bottom right section of our pinata. So no matter what the shape is, just go over and quickly shade the right bottom part of your different elements. So the right bottom part of my leg here, same thing with this leg, the neck, the ear, and we're also going to use a bit of shadow to help separate the different elements, like this ear should be behind. So I'm just going to add a bit of a shadow there. And same thing with the tail, it should be behind. So I'm just going to add a bit of a shadow to help it, you know, be separate as well. I personally like the color I use for my shadows, but if you don't like yours, it is really easy to change because it is on a separate layer. All you have to do is going in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting the hue, saturation and brightness tool. And then you can play with the hue to kind of change what would be the original color, the saturation to change how intense the color is, as well as the brightness to change how, you know, dark or light the shadow is. That being said, it is not going to make a super big difference though because, you know, it is applied as a blending mode. So the blending mode is one of the most important thing. If you feel like your shadows are not dark enough or if you feel like they're too dark, instead of going in with the hue, saturation, and brightness tool, I recommend you just change the opacity. So lower the opacity if you feel like they're too dark or increase the opacity if you want them to be. Great, so all we have left to do is animate our pinata, which is going to be super easy and really fun. And the first thing we need to do for that is to activate animation assist. So just going in the wrench icon menu, in the canvas submenu, you're going to activate the animation assist toggle, which is going to open up this bottom menu right here. And here you might notice that your image might look different. And the reason for that is that Procreate is going to consider all the different layers and the different groups as what is called frames. So we can see that the frames at the bottom are essentially the confettis and then the pinata. So we have the confetti layer here and the pinata here. To create an animation, we're going to need to create multiple frames of the pinata, and we're going to have some slight change in the positioning of the pinata throughout the different frames so that when we play them in a row, it looks like an animation, it looks like the pinata is moving. But before that, we need to make sure the confettis are not part of the animation because if we click play right now, it's just going to alternate between the pinata and the confettis and that's really not what we want. So we need to tell Procreate that the confettis or honestly anything else you might be using for your background is the background and needs to stay put. So the way to do that is to go on your background frame and then tapping on that frame, selecting background, which is going to kind of lock it as the background. Now if we click play, nothing is happening. If you don't see a background option on the layer or the group that you want to have as your background, make sure that it is right above the background color layer that you have in Procreate. If you have any kind of layer between, even if it's hidden, it is not going to work. So yeah, just make sure that any layer you want to use as your background or any group you want to use as your background is right above the background color. Now once that is done, go ahead and create a copy of your pinata group. And to do that, just swipe it towards the left with one finger and select duplicate. Now one copy we're going to keep as a safety. So just go ahead and uncheck it so it's not visible. It's also going to not be part of your frames anymore. But that way we know we always have kind of the original group with all the layers intact. Now in the other group, what we're going to do is we're going to merge all of the layers that are related to the pinata except for the string. So from the pinata shape to anything related to the eye, you're going to take two fingers and you're going to squish those layers together, which is going to create one pinata shape layer and one string layer separate, all in your pinata group. Now this is the pinata group we're going to duplicate to create our different frames. So go ahead and duplicate it once. And we're going to slightly change the position of this version of the pinata to start showing movement. So with the top group selected, we're going to use the arrow tool and we're going to rotate the pinata a little bit towards the right. Now here we want to make sure that the top of the string is always in the same position. So once you're done rotating, just go ahead and move your pinata so the string aligns. 
And to make the movement even better, because the string is in theory just attached to the pinata at one point here, the pinata is not going to move always exactly in line with the string, it's going to move a little bit more than the string. So we're going to open up the pinata group, we're going to select the pinata shape, and we're going to rotate the pinata shape a little bit more. So again, just using the arrow tool, and then rotating it a little tiny bit. Now if we click play, we can see we have a start of a movement, but it doesn't look super, super good. So we're going to repeat this step a few more times to create the full animation. So duplicating your top pinata group, and then rotating the entire group a little bit, aligning the string as well at the top, and then opening your group, selecting the pinata shape itself, and rotating that as well. So right now if we press play, our pinata is going to be moving kind of in one direction and it's going to look really super weird. So we're going to make it move in the other direction as well. So for that, select the bottom pinata group, which is the one in which the pinata is right in the middle. Duplicate it. And the order of those layers is also the order of the frames that the animation is playing through. And so since we want a movement that goes from one side to the other, we want the straight pinata to be the middle frame, which means we're going to rotate the bottom group we selected, which as you can see is the first frame we have in the sequence. So just using your arrow tool once more, this time we're going to rotate in the other direction, just a bit, aligning the string again. And once more, just rotating the pinata shape itself, just a tiny, tiny bit. And just to make sure the movement is even, we're also going to repeat this step so that we have two frames on either side of the middle frame. So duplicating the bottom group we just created and making sure we are selecting the bottom copy so that we are working on the first frame of the sequence. Once more, just using the arrow tool rotating it a little bit, aligning the string, going back in to rotate the pinata shape itself a little bit. And there we go. Now if we click play, we should get some sort of an animation, but as you can see, right now it's going in one direction and then it's just kind of jumping back to the start. So we're just going to tell Procreate that instead of going back to the start of the sequence, we're going to go back and forth in the sequence. And to do that, the only thing you have to do is tapping on settings here and then selecting ping pong. Now if you want, you could also change the speed your animation is going through by changing the frames per second. Now there's one little detail that we absolutely need to talk about if you do want to export your illustration or your animation I should say to post it on social media. Facebook and Instagram require your video to be at least three seconds long. Now the length of your video is going to depend on the frame per second setting you have here. So for example right now I have it set to five which means for every five frame I have in my animation I'm going to have one second. So to make sure our video is actually long enough to be posted all we need to do is go back and just duplicate the different layers we have. But right now they all have the same name so it's going to be a little bit confusing for the order so I recommend you just rename it to pinata one, pinata two, pinata three, <laughs> you get the idea. And then all you have to do is duplicate your groups until you have enough copies to have three seconds. So if I have five frames per second and I need three seconds, five times three, I'm going to need 15 frames. So yeah, just go ahead and duplicate your layers and then just reorganize them until they are in the right order. But be careful here, since we are using the ping pong feature, our frames are going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 1. So in your layer list, you also need to follow that order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you do that, your animation is just going to jump straight back to that kind of movement that is broken one side to the other and then jumping back to the original side. Once you do have enough layer and you like the way your animation is playing, it's really easy to export it. Just go in the wrench icon menu, selecting the share option, and in the bottom section, the share layer section, go ahead and select animated mp4. 
make sure the frame per second here is the same as you set in your settings and then you can just tap export and then if you select save video it's going to save your videos within your camera roll and from there it's the exact same as any other video you might have on your ipad or your phone so you can just post it wherever you want if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more simple animations in Procreate, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.